Cents Per Mile, featuring Charles Gracie, Paul Gibson, and Josh Haynes. Everyone knows the trucking industry has issues, but most people are afraid to talk about it. Someone's got to do it. With loads of recruiting and marketing experience, and backed by the largest driver audience in the world, we deliver carriers the driver perspective, we find solutions, and help make sense make sense. Thank you for tuning in the Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. Hey, I'm Josh Haynes. Gentlemen, we are looking fresh, cut, and, uh, well, except for Paul, he looks the same. Why, why is that, Charles? Well, we are in season three, and we decided to do everyone else a favor. And this season, Josh is going to do the weird mustache. Oh. <laughs> I don't have the chin for that, so sorry. You got you to gotta stay tuned. It's coming soon. But yeah, season three, we even updated our intro. Uh, everything's looking solid. We're super pumped to be here. And uh, this season should be a lot of fun. We got a lot of surprises already up our sleeves. They're short, but they're up there. Yeah, so we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Reefs Across America Radio, and FreightWave. So you definitely need to like, subscribe, and follow because we got some exciting stuff coming your way. Yep, and you know the YouTube channel, you like and subscribe to that. It helps push us out uh, a little bit further. Uh, anything helps. Um, and we can you know, continue to take Season 3 and then even Season 4 to the next level because from what I understand, that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, and you can also go to sense per mile podcast.com. Uh, if you go into the contact section, you can submit a topic you can submit to be a guest or a sponsor. Speaking of sponsors, today's sponsor is Masila Valley transportation. Go visit them and check them out at M dash V dash T.com. All right. Well, I think it's time for the news. All right, so it's time for 10-2 News, where we go through CDL Life and we find some of the top stories from the past couple weeks, uh, and we check them out. So the first story, <laughs> the first story is the Federal Trade Commission uh, has banned non-competes nationwide. Now, disclaimer, there's a good chance that this is going to end up in some you know legal mumbo jumbo, obviously get appealed and taken up. Uh, but for the same time, I think this is a good move for workers. But from what I understand, someone else has a different take. I just think everything shouldn't be applied in a cookie cutter mold. And there's there's applications where it makes sense. And we should evaluate those conversations. Mm -hmm. Where it makes sense for businesses. Hey, we all work for somebody. All I want is to explore conversations where people are educated to form their own opinions. I mean, we're literally on a show where we try to give a voice to an entire workforce. But sure. Paul, we are not turning cents per mile into a debate. Uh, nine competes. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, because I'll win. <laughs> <laughs> First time for everything. Fair enough on the podcast, at least. Uh, so that being said, um, I uh, this one I don't think is very arguable. Um, and I don't really like to talk down on organizations and stuff like that. But but Bucky's right. So there's been some controversy with truck parking and stuff like that. Um, apparently there was a driver who bobtailed onto their lot and went in there and they were like, sorry, no truck parking. You got to get that truck out of here. There's a sign that says no 18 wheelers. So he did. And he went and parked his bobtail on the side of the road and then proceeded to go back into the Bucky's after parking his bobtail on the side of the road, not in the Bucky's parking lot or on their property, walked back into the Bucky's and the Bucky's manager stopped him at the door and told him he couldn't come in. Yeah. I mean, they're not doing themselves no favors here because you already got the truckers out there voicing their opinions on the whole Bucky situation. And I see it from both points of view. Their stores aren't set up to support truck parking. Uh, but at the same time, if someone goes out of their way to park on the shoulder, at some point, I imagine there's a memo coming out saying, hey, do's and don'ts. I'm just saying that is the most, hey, we're a shipper and we do have a bathroom, but you can't use it kind of crap I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely not painting them in the in the way that they probably want to be painted right now. And I'm sure, like I said, that there's a conversation here. Uh, but I look forward to seeing where it comes and maybe there's some positive changes that come out of this. Maybe they start having a cross the street lot like some of the other places. Yeah, or maybe they'll realize that their stockers aren't the only part of things getting on the shelves. Anyway, so speaking of truck drivers, it's time to go behind the wheel. 
All right, so it's time for Behind the Wheel. So being backed by CDL Life, we have access to the world's largest driver audience. Uh, and in doing that, we get to ask real drivers real questions and get their real opinions about real issues. So today we're talking about a positive outlook on the trucking industry. You know, like a positive outlook, positive about the future, where things are going. And so we decided to ask the audience, do you have a positive outlook on the future of trucking? Uh, and 100% of the drivers said, no. Um, so that's, um, surprising, not surprising. Um, and in the spirit of season three, getting a little bit spicier already, uh, to read the top comment, this is not our words. This is a driver. This is a quote. So bear with me. Um, the top comment to, in response to, do you, you have a positive outlook on the future of the trucking industry was I'm positive. We're f that's the tone out there, and I think it's in the spirit of season three in today's episode that we're going to bring some positivity to trucking. Speaking of that, I think it's time for a new segment. Why don't you tell people about it, Charles? Today's new segment in season three is Behind the Desk, sponsored by 10 Street. So now it's time to go Behind the Desk with 10 Street, and today we have Tim Crawford with us. Hey, thanks a lot, Charles. Really happy to be here. Yeah, so we're talking about positive outlooks in trucking, and I couldn't think of someone better to bring some data to the table than 10 Street. So what do you got for us today? Yeah, I, I appreciate it. And and it's not as positive as we would like it to see, but I think what we're seeing is a lot less um, chicken little, hey, the sky is falling than we saw six months ago. You know, Six months ago when we were talking to, to carriers and even when we talked to drivers, it was, man, um, the bottom was no end in, nowhere in sight. And what we're seeing now is everybody's really pretty hopeful about where things are happening in the second half of the year, maybe into early next year. Um, obviously, we'd like to get it here to get it sooner rather than later. But when we look at uh, carriers saying, hey, we think things are getting better when we see drivers looking for their next job, um, it feels like people are ready to turn that corner in a way that they weren't a couple quarters ago. Nice. So that's some interesting takes here. And being that we got it from the driver's perspective, now we're getting it from your guys' perspective and all the people you guys talk to. I think this is an important thing to just keep following up on going forth. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it can't get here fast enough. And it's not saying, hey, there's uh, it's 1920 or 2022 again. Um, but it's it's definitely not early 23. Well, thanks for sharing that insight with us. And thanks for the new segment on Sense Per Mile. Looking forward to the rest of season three. Likewise, super happy to be here and looking forward to it. Masia Valley Transportation, founded by truck drivers for truck drivers. Why choose MVT? Well, it's simple. I started off as a driver. Now I'm managing routes. With MVT, the sky's the limit. Balance is key. State-of-the-art equipment, a strong focus on safety, and a family-driven company culture where respect and hard work are at the core. Masia Valley Transportation, where we care about you. Join our family today. All right, gentlemen, it's time for our main topic, which is Make Sense Makes Sense. And today we're talking about a positive outlook on trucking. Uh, I'm going to send it to Paul first because he looks like a deer caught in headlights. What are your thoughts on this, Paul? Well, I mean, so to be fair, um, you know, you got a decent amount of time where it's kind of felt like this, you know, it's, it's, there's been a lot of stuff over the past, you know, 30 ish years, um, where it's, it's kind of felt like, you know, two steps forward, three steps back. Um, but I think that there, I, I think, you know, kind of like Tim talked about how they're, you know, being a bottom and then eventually like you, you get towards that and it has to come back up. I, I would like to think that like, at some point we have to hit that point where it's got to turn around. You know, because I mean, at that point, our, our infrastructure can't afford to lose trucking. And I don't think we're close enough to autonomous trucks and people's comfortability, essentially, with essentially robots on the road, that this can't rebound in some way. Well, and you're right. It, this is a pendulum. And over the course of the years, it swings both ways. Or like some people describe a roller coaster. You have your highs, you have your lows, and you have to, as an organization, be able to weather the in-between. So that's where we're at. Now, granted, this low felt like it was a little bit lower and a little bit longer than a lot of people would have liked. But they forget about the times where it was high for a lot longer than it historically has been. So, I mean... It's all about the ups and downs and preparing for both. That's how you build that foundation for success. And I am positive that the pendulum is going to swing the other way. We're already starting to see signs of it. 
Well, and I think that that's a huge tell too. And, you know, we've had people on the show talk about it before, you know, obviously around 2020 and, you know, the, the toilet paper, uh, scare, uh, you know, when people just didn't, you know, found out like, Oh, truck drivers do do their jobs. Um, you know, like uh, around that time, like, you know, obviously there was a bunch of people that are like, Oh man, I'm going to become an owner operator. I'm going to buy a truck. I'm going to make so much money. Um, you know, in, in what a lot of those people didn't do was build relationships you know, with carriers, with shippers, uh, et cetera. And it's one of those things now you're starting to see who actually built that foundation and didn't, you know, with the big bloodbath that happened last year. Um, and I feel like a lot of the carriers that are getting shooken out, for the most part, have been shooken out. Um, I think everybody that's that's left is, is kind of in it for <clears throat> the long haul. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's got to go back the other way. And I feel like, um there while there's still some regulations that i don't love in the pipeline uh there's been a lot more attempts to create good things than than i feel like i've seen in previous years like towards the end of last year and and next year and you know we'll see whoever has hold of congress and see if we can actually get something passed but like the fact there's actually bills coming out to get drivers bathroom access which already seemed like a no-brainer but the fact that it's happening i think is great the fact that we need a bill is baffling, but here we are discussing a bill for bathroom access. Um, you know, there's a lot of positive things on the, uh, on the horizon for trucking. And I think, you know, you just got to tune in the cents per mile, watch us discuss them and break them down and formulate your own opinions on where you stand on them. But, uh, in the spirit of a positive outlook, you know, this episode, that's what it's designed to do is show people the positive things that are coming down the pipeline and that they can look forward to as the pendulum starts to swing. So let's hop into it. All right, so uh, who's our guest? Well, we have Charles Gracie Jr. with us. CJ, welcome back to Sense Per Mile. Thank you. Hello, Paul. How's it going, man? Good. So we're talking about positive outlook on trucking. Um, you know, you, you seem like a great person to talk to, you know, because, you know, you see a lot of stuff with your dad. You've been around. You've been to truck shows. You know the, you know the deal. Um, so from your perspective... Uh, which is a very unique one. What what do you think the future of trucking looks like? Um, so the future of trucking, in my view, is like we're going to have like probably better GPSs because I know you all kind of struggle with that sometimes. Um, probably better time with like loading and other stuff and just better like technology in general. Well, and, and, and one thing that's always exploded my brain, considering other interactions I've had uh, about you, CJ, like, do you want to get into, like, just from what you've seen, do you want to get into trucking whenever you, you grow up and can have a job? So still a little bit of a decision. I'm not sure, but mostly yes, because I, I have the expert here at where I'm living. <laughs> that's fair. You just earned your allowance for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and that, and that's awesome, man. I mean, well, especially because, you know, you, your grandpa and then your dad, like, so it's just kind of like a family thing. And that's how a lot of people get into it. Um, I mean, what has that meant to you? Like, what does trucking mean to you having seen that generationally happen in your family? Um, so trucking is like an important job. Uh, so... I see my grandpa, he was a truck driver himself. He's been a truck driver and I don't know. I probably might either be a recruiter or a truck driver and then turn to a recruiter like he did. Yeah. You know, just like the father's footsteps. I like that. You know, my kid has, has started to get into video editing, so I totally get it. One, one of the cool things I want to interject into there is a lot of people ask how you can incorporate the youth and get them excited about truck driving. I started when I was a driver. I, I used to bring CJ by the truck, around the truck, show him things about the truck. I incorporate them into my day to day. You know, depending on where you sit on this, there's always a way to incorporate tomorrow's future into trucking into your day to day and help them build the excitement or formulate their own opinions on the industry. Maybe bring fresh ideas. All right. So here's real quick. We're going to, we're going to see how good of a trucking dad Charles is. <laughs> <laughs> so did, how old were you when he first started trying to get you to do the arm pump or did he ever try to get you to do the arm pump? I've done the arm pump with my grandpa and him. And I would say I was about five to seven about 
That's right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a fair answer. All right. So before we let you go, though, CJ, which I love the fact that you got out of school for this, <laughs> you know, you're welcome. Um, but uh, who's your favorite person on the show? Uh. Hot Seat Services has rent a recruiter. Wait. Hey, Michael, have you heard that Hot Seat Services rent a recruiter service will place their staff in your organization similar to a temporary hire model? No way. What else does it do? Follow me, I have to tell everyone. They take leads in existing databases to put new hires into your business's trucks. Well, shit in me timbers! What else? Come on! Their model's more cost efficient because their recruiters are trained and can get your pipeline flowing easier and faster. No way, anything else? No matter how many hires they make, it's a set cost per week, so the more they get, the better their client's cost per hire gets. Holy sh for more information and to find out for yourself, go to hotseatservices.com. All right. So we're back from an ad and now it's uh, time to just kind of continue to talk about it. Another angle that that is is kind of, I think, overlooked, but because also caused some problems that, that we, we don't really talk about is uh, the advancement in what that means for drivers who are out on the road. You know, like, so technology has come a long way. I mean, even from the time that you drove, Charles, like, so what is what do you think what do you think that technology looks like as far as helping drivers not be miserable when they're stuck on their tit? Well, I think there's layers to this. And to be honest with you, I think there's multiple things that are going to be implemented, developed and expanded upon that are going to make the driver's experience on the road better. And that's the goal of the industry. And it should be the goal. If you're not thinking how you can make this experience better for the drivers and your entire organization, then you're going to struggle when that pendulum swings. So how do you make them more comfortable in the truck? How do you give them more amenities for why they're in the truck? How do you make their day-to-day -day job easier? And that you have to have the conversation to what parts are hard in order to identify where you can improve upon. So we need to be looking at ourselves, and in the words of Robert Pearson, we need to identify where our baby's ugly and try to give it a facelift in those areas. Well, I mean, and so like, but I mean, that being said, like, is there any technology that you could think of that maybe hasn't been developed yet? Other than obviously like, you know, teleportation uh, that could make uh, that, that you could think of that that could be in the pipeline that would make a driver's life easier when they're when they're stuck out on the road. Absolutely. The first thing that comes to mind is something to solve the problem of I give my dispatcher updates. I put all my calls in the system and yet I still get a broker waking me up in the middle of my sleep time. Like, why am I doing all this stuff? And why is this guy still calling me? You know, there should be someone to address that. There should be some kind of transparency on the back end that doesn't inconvenience the driver if they're already checking those boxes on the front end. So what you're saying is someone needs to make an app with an away message for truck drivers that automatically gives out all that information. Yeah, I mean, just go in there and flip a switch and say, hey, I'm off duty. Do not bother me. Uh, but I think it goes beyond that. I, I mean, these trucks they're already small enough. So, you know, people are looking for innovative ways to incorporate life for that driver in that truck since they spend so much time in that truck. So you've seen things like drivers now bringing their gaming systems with them. You've seen driver drivers have a benefit from companies where they have TVs installed in the truck, which is good for the company because they control where they go and the damage being done to the truck. And it's good for the driver because it gives them entertainment while they're in the truck. But then there's the day to day job. Like those amenities go a long way. But the, what about day to day? Like, I've said it before, if you're a carrier and you're looking at how to make the driver's job easier, it's not just about the technology you can put in place. It's about just giving them some benefits like truck parking. That should be a carrier's concern of where can our drivers park for two reasons. It should be one, helping them progress along the way more efficiently, which gets more done on the company side, but also makes the driver's job easier because first thing I was trained is start looking for parking two hours before you run out of hours. What if someone solved that? Well, I mean, and additionally, like, I mean, especially when you get into companies that do lease purchase and stuff, there's a lot of talking of, hey, this is our asset. We have to protect it. That's why we have this, this and this in place. It's like if you're if that's your asset and you're worried about it, which you should be because uh, trucks aren't cheap. Why wouldn't you want to make sure that that truck was going to be parked somewhere safe, that it, it wasn't parked somewhere 
that there's a liability due to, to hours and whatnot. And that's certainly an argument, but also along those lines is these trucks are an asset. So are the drivers in the truck. So if you have a good driver and a good truck, there should be no excuse why you shouldn't want to maximize the revenue on that truck. Part of the way you can maximize it is by solving some of these problems so the drivers don't have to shut down early. They can maximize their miles by hitting that goalpost and here's my safe parking spot. Okay, so real quick, before we go to our guests, I just want to say when people call drivers assets, like that bothers the hell out of me. You can't take depreciation on your taxes for your drivers. They're people. But they are. And in business, man, I, I told, and I've said this multiple times, you're either a liability or you're an asset. I'd much rather someone call me an asset than a liability in a conversation. Tell me you run a business without telling me you run a business. Anyway, so we got two guests today for our second guest spot. We have Greg Iverson and Chris Thomas uh, at Matt's. Um, we all actually had a really, which actually inspired the topic for this episode. Um, these are two of the most positive people I've ever met about the outlook of trucking. Um, and it was just one of the most beautiful conversations that I've ever been a part of in this industry. Uh, and I wanted to try and maybe not exactly word for word, but somehow recreate the vibe of that conversation. Uh, so you could enjoy it too. Before hopping in there, I will piggyback off the back of what you said, which was wonderful. These are two of the most wholesome people I've met in trucking. Uh, from Chris Thomas and his views from an owner operator's perspective to Greg Iverson, who's been doing it a long time. These are two people I turn to all the time. So we're trying to share that with our audience. So welcome back, uh, Greg. Welcome back, Chris. And uh, thanks for coming on Sense Per Mile. Yeah, appreciate it. Good to see you, Chris. Thanks for having us. So you guys, you guys had a wonderful conversation at Matt's. Uh, we want to share some of that positivity and outlook. So, you know, tell us why you're positive about the direction of trucking and where it's going. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, you know, I, I, positive is a choice. You, you got to be positive about it. So this getting positive is a whole lot of things. It's not just being positive. It's making good decisions, practicing good habits, driving safely it's doing all of these things to and create your own positive environment so you kind of have to create your own positivity in that way and and i'm positive about the industry because as far as it goes i mean this is the best that it's ever been i mean the technology's better you know there's more truck stops there's more services i think that we will get more parking we will have a lot of these problems that's been you know affecting the industry for quite some time i think they're going to get solved because there's a lot of noise about it. There's a lot of conversations about it on the Internet. And I think that, you know, and, and you have to take a little bit of reality and, with the situation and just accept what you, trucking is. Trucking is a hard job. You have to be a professional all the time. So if you do all these things, then you can have a positive outlook on what you're doing and then address the issues as they come up. But don't take them as a, it's the end of my career. I'm having a bad day. I hate my job. But you got to. You gotta kind of take everything with a little bit of medicine and uh, and look forward, not not just look at the bad side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's a little. I think it's kind of trendy lately to be negative about things, whether it's the economy or you know the freight recession. People just want to be negative. But on the you know for some of us that have been around a long time, you know that we've been I've been through a bunch of these freight recession. You know, nineteen ninety, two thousand seven. 2018, you know, to name a few, and I know there's others, but I'm getting old. I don't remember that far back. But we always come, we always come through them, right? It gets a little tough. This one's different. This one's long, but and I'm, uh, you know, I think it was what was the number I saw? Sixty thousand new uh, operating authorities came in in early 2000s uh, when freight was booming, right? They're not falling out as fast as I thought they were going to, right? I, I think that's. I was probably reading on freight waves. There's a relationship between the brokers that have grown and they're keeping all the small carriers alive. They may not be making much money, but they're out there still working, right? Rather than putting them out of business. I, you know, I think that's a positive. You know, the big carriers are probably feeling it more than the small ones, but they're all, they're all still in business. And on the bright side, maybe when we come through this, I won't have to hear about the 60,000 driver shortage thing that always comes up. Maybe it'll be. <laughs> so, you know, but it's, we always come through it and it's, and there's so much good stuff. Like Chris was saying, the equipment, the technology thing, there's, uh, you know, I know everybody loves to hear 
my, you know, back in the day stories, but some of the trucks I drove, you know, in the eighties, I mean, I had to throw a quilt over my legs to keep from freezing from the holes in the floor, you know, blowing cold air, you know, it was, it was now, I mean, our trucks have leather seats, leather cooled, heated seats, you know, solar panel to charge the batteries for, I mean, it's phenomenal stuff. It's, you know, it's, and it's a tough job. So we try to, you know, I'm glad to see all that technology come in to make it as, as good as possible. Well, Chris, you're still doing the job. Greg, you've done the job. I've done the job. You know, there's been a lot of progression in the job. We always isolate all the things that are wrong, but we never often take time to appreciate the things that have been solved. So in that progression of things that have been solved, I imagine that's where some of this positivity comes from because you're comparing it from where it was to where it is now. What's some of the biggest things that you see on the horizon that are positive? Uh, I, I personally think uh, your, your truck services are going to get better. Um, they're competing. You know, there's so many players. There used to be just three or four big big chains, and now, you know, racetracks getting in the game, quick trips getting in the game, all of these small mom and pops or smaller independent operators, just like in the carriers, we're all getting more competition. And anytime you have kind of competition, you have the level of service improves for everybody because everybody wants that. Everybody wants that. I mean, they want your business. So I think it's no different for carriers it is for truckers. And so I think you're going to see some of that. I think you're going to see some, some legislation that's going to move in a positive way. I think there's some legislative, legislation that might not be so positive, you know, have a, but I think that things uh, just in general are getting better. I think education's better. I think in, in truck, in truck access to your, uh, family and to your business and the in the social it's all it's all coming together and these are all really good things and uh, i think covid was a dark time and, and and a lot of people are still feeding off of the covid energy right they're still feeling like uh, it's the doom and gloom the the isolation of that so we kind of got past that and we got a few things that we still can figure out but i i think i think at the end of the day like i see things just getting better yeah i see a lot of uh from working with people in the industry, I see a lot of the, I'm pretty excited about the next generation of leaders coming up. The men and women, they're, they're taking over the company, mostly on the, on the carrier side, right? They're really driving. What I see is they're driving culture change pretty directly. And like Paul said, you, um, one of the worst things I can ever hear is when they, you know, you talk about drivers as an asset or they treat them like a commodity. I think there's some new, there's some leaders coming up that are driving that and they're going to try and stop that as much as possible. And they have to, it's, you walk into a carrier and you hear people talking about the drivers, those drivers, and it's divisive, right? And it's, you don't, you know, we don't talk about the fleet managers like that. Those fleet managers, we'll probably, we talk about safety like that, but they kind of deserve it. But other than that, other than that, it's, but it's, it just needs to, we need to be one team, right? All the people, men and women driving their trucks, it's and again, I, I see a lot of the young leaders. I'm pretty excited about that change in the. Yeah. And, and Greg with that, um, one thing that I've kind of, so I totally agree with you because especially when people say the drivers, those drivers feels like the way I talk about my kids when they're all screaming in the back of the minivan. Um, but that being said, there, there is, it does seem like on the back end, it does almost seem like there's kind of a changing of the guard and there's a lot more younger people coming up. Um, <clears throat> One thing I've noticed is with that, there's there's kind of almost become a slight attack or an offense against the whole adage of it's always been this way. This is what works. This is how we do it. And there's a lot more disruption that, that's kind of come into the market, which I think is a positive. Uh, what's your experience with that? It's, um, you know, there's a lot of the old guard that's starting to wander away, um, you know, and uh, I see, you know, I guess I see a lot of the, the females that are running, the women that are coming in and running the industry, it's kicking a lot of the testosterone out, and it's not a bad thing in, in the way companies are run. So A little TLC goes a long way, and it kind of goes to the, the culture of last season was communication and relationships being the foundation of building a relationship. You need that communication, and you need – that relationship to take things to the next level. So, you know, Chris, you spoke to from a driver's perspective, some of the amenity amenities and access to those improving, you know, Greg, you spoke to, you know, 
that mentality changing. And I think for me, what especially with my background in recruiting, one of the most encouraging things is the way we're making it easier for people to apply, the way we're making it easier for people to get updates, the way we're making it more accessible to find information on your potential employers. These are important things to take this to the next level. So I, I'm very positive about where it's going. I do think you're going to see bumps along the way, and that's okay. Right. There's always a, little, there's a few bumps, you know, but you listen to look at some of the numbers and the ATA is projecting 2% increase in freight volume over the coming 10 years, you know, 2% a year. It's It comes back. It always does. The economy is not doing bad. People are buying things, you know, it's just spread out over more trucks, right? No, exactly. So I'm interested in season three covering this and that growth of the industry. And I appreciate you guys coming on the Sense Per Mile to share your perspectives and some of that positive energy as we kick off season three of Sense Per Mile. Appreciate having us on. Thanks for having us. And just like you said, communicate. If you're feeling bad, reach out to somebody and talk. All right. Well, may maybe conversations will be our thing this year. All right. Well, I think that does it for the first episode of season three. Pretty sure the theme, we can bet on it if you want, but I think it's pendulums because Charles said that like eight times. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week and uh, stoked to be here. So till next week, thank you for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. See you next time.